there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor, hit the like, hit that subscribe, poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in, buckle in, and let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Ken, folks, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, so my news feed, it's being filled with Mr. Jamal True Love. Now, I know about Jamal True Love a few years ago, and if you guys don't know, we're going to do a quick recap. In 2008, I was framed for murder and wrongfully convicted by the office of Kamala Harris, sentenced 50 to life in prison. It took me five and a half years to ultimately get back in the trial due to prosecutorial misconduct. And it took me another year to go to my second trial, to which I was vindicated by a jury of my peers. When I got convicted, Kamala Harris was in the courtroom. When I got sentenced 50 to life in prison, Kamala Harris was in the courtroom. When I looked back and I seen her, she was smiling. And she did that stupid ass laugh that she do right now. <laughs> this shit ain't funny. So, Jamal True Love was charged and sentenced for 50 years for a murder that he did not commit, right? By the hands of uh, Kamala Harris. Now, this is about four years ago when I found out about this, right? He's doing radio interviews and he's going around and he's talking about Kamala Harris. You would think he'll be bitter. You would think that he's sour. You think that he had venom and that he's going to uh, tear it down, right? Don't trust Kamala Harris is what I was thinking. So the year 2020, he's on the Breakfast Club and he does an interview with Charlemagne the Fraud and let's take a listen. I, I mean, I know we got to get Trump out of office. That's why I went ahead and, and was the bigger man to say, you know, look, I'm not going to let the right wing use my case, mm -hmm. I mean, to bash a Kamala Harris. What? After all that she's done to you, she set you up. She sent you even 50 years. She laughed at you. And <laughs> he still says he's going to vote for the Biden ticket because she's a black woman. Right. So when I heard that, I'm like, this guy got to be an idiot. Now, Mr. True Love is back on the scene. He's all over my news feed and he does an interview with the Art of Dialogue. And let's take a listen. People say that they will take $10 million if they had to, to go and do six and a half years in prison. And to be honest, I probably will too. If you said, hey, look, got this $10 million for you. You go do six and a half years in prison and you come home in six and a half years, coming from where I come from, and mostly all black people is going to say, yeah, let's run it. Because we've always been prepared for jail, whether we did it or we didn't do it. Right? But now, th in this case, would you take $10 million to go have life in prison and not know you coming home. Nobody takes that deal. So now he's still talking about his case. And there's something a little different. Mr. Art asks him, who are you going to vote for? Who do you want to see the people vote for? Kamala or Trump? Yeah, so every time I see Kamala laugh, again, like I think about that time in the courtroom, right? Uh, her high fiving, you know, and it, celebrating, celebrating the win. Now, when I say celebrating the win, not that she argued it, but you know, her office, and it's right before, you know, the attorney general election. So she's, so she's celebrating my me losing 
being, you know, framed for murder. And that's all I can see it as. I don't care what everybody else, you know, look at it and say and try to give reason why I should be the bigger person and, you know, all of these things. And it's like, you know, the future of the country is on the line. I ain't trying to hear that shit. Y'all sold us that in 2016. Y'all sold us that and, and under Trump, everything was cool. You asked the, you asked the day-to-day nigga. You ask the day-to-day nigga, they going to say, when Trump was in office, shit was cool. Groceries was low, right? You know, uh, um. Bam. Okay. Ricky Smiley. Charlemagne the Frog. Steve Harvey. D.L. Hughley. Did you listen to the guy? Now, this guy, in the beginning, believed all the Kool-Aid. He still voted for Biden in 2020. Despite everything that Kamala and the police department of San Francisco did to him. He comes out and he believed that Trump was the boogeyman. Now, Trump did not write no laws, no crime bill in 1994. And he didn't put you in jail. Trump is not a prosecutor. So he never put nobody in jail or he never wrote no laws to put any black man in jail. Mr. Jamal, true love, got rung through the system. And lucky for him, he beat the odds. That 1%, 99% of the folks that get charged for 50 years, they're going to do your 50 years. He beat the charge and he got rewarded. So despite all that, he goes in, he comes out, he voted for Kamala and Biden. Four years later, he sees the bullshit. He does his homework. He goes in and figure out what's going on. And he sees that no new, no wars and no money going to Ukraine and other countries and all the immigrants. A migrant family of four in New York could get over 20 grand a month in freebies, 500 a night at a hotel, 130 a day for food and having two kids in public school costs us five grand a month. We didn't even tack on Mayor Adams' $1,000 cash gift cards, the free health care at the ER, or the free phones and free lawyers, or the $400,000 in free college tuition per dreamer. Meanwhile, taxpayers with jobs in New York pay thousands to live in a closet. So true love, just like J.D. Vance, believe in the media bullshit about Trump. He did a little homework, Ricky Smiley. He does a little homework about Harris in the Biden administration. And just like J.D. Vance and others, like uh, baby girl here, Amber Ross, Amber Rose, they change their mind about Trump. Snoop Dogg changes his mind about Trump. There's a lot of people who change their mind about Trump after just four years and see all the bullshit. So shout out to you, true love. Welcome aboard. Come on in. Your story is inspiring. Even though four years ago, when you told the story, I thought you bumped your head. I'm like, man, he's still going to vote for her? Are you crazy? But, you know, you live and learn. That's my thought for the day, guys. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you boules, get your ass off my lawn. <laughs>